Hello everyone. Today we are making gourmet tantam and ramen. And I'm so excited to share this with you just to show that there is really nothing off limits when it comes to preparing your own meals at home. Let's go ahead and get right into it. You're going to need boiling water for your eggs, your bok choy and noodles. And I'm also gonna show you what else we are going to need. We're needing soy sauce, hot chili oil, and by the way, I chose this music for the intro just to get us in the mood because we are heading to Asia. We'll be there in about 20 minutes. We're gonna need fried chili oil and chili beans and chili oil. Oil, 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 you know what I mean. <laughs> We're gonna need oyster sauce and sesame oil, if I can find it. Here we go. All right, so we're also going to need some chicken or beef broth, some garlic, cloves, bok choy, green onion, coconut milk, and ignore the peanut butter for right now. We'll talk about that later. All right, so I normally don't like soft boiled eggs, but I do in my ramen. So I'm making two soft boiled eggs. And this is just how I do it for some reason. I don't even know why I do this this way, but I do. So you don't have to use soft boiled eggs. You can use um, hard boiled eggs if you like. And if you like soft boiled eggs, then you know exactly what I mean. It is so good in ramen. All right, so I cook them for about eight minutes and then I put them in cold water to stop the cooking process. All right, so in a mortar, I'm going to be adding about eight pieces of garlic. I love garlic, can't have too much garlic. And a whole chili, I only have some little baby chili, so I've used two. I'm actually going to end up using four Thai chili peppers. And this is actually going to be a fusion of Japanese, uh, Thai, and even Indian. So, just come along and I'll share with you what I am doing. We're going to grind all of this up and we're also going to be adding some hot chili oil into this mixture. We're going to end up using half of this mixture for our noodles and have to season our meat. season our ground pork. I'm not going to tell you how much you want to need because that depends on how many servings you're trying to make and how much pork you like. This recipe is going to make about four small bowls of ramen or two large bowls. I'm actually making one huge bowl but you can get four normal size ramen bowls from this recipe. So we are adding half of the garlic and chili oil mixture to this. We're also going to be adding some hot chili oil and sesame oil. You're going to use approximately a fourth of a cup of hot chili oil because we'll need some excess chili oil for our presentation of the ramen dish. Okay. 
Okay, so that is the other half of our garlic chili oil paste that we made. We're gonna take it out of the mortar and set it aside because I'm going to ground up the chili beans and season the meat with this hot chili bean paste. One unique thing about this recipe is that you don't have to add any salt at all. And it's still super flavorful. This is the excess hot chili oil that I was talking about, approximately one fourth of a cup. So we are going to remove our meat because it's done now. And we're going to use the exact same pan that we used to brown our meat to prepare our broth because there is some deliciousness still left in that pan and it's gonna help flavor our broth really, really good. In the same pan we use to brown our pork, we're going to add whatever type of beef or chicken broth you have. This is 33 ounces that I'm using for this recipe. So it just depends on how many servings you're trying to get. Again, this is gonna make one huge bowl or two large bowls or four normal size ramen bowls. So now we're back to the other half of our garlic chili oil paste. And I told you that we'll talk about the peanut butter. So let's talk about it. This should actually be sesame paste, but I did not have any sesame paste and I don't live near any Asian markets that I could have just run pick some up real quick. So I am substituting peanut butter in its place. But if you have never had peanut butter in a dish, I would not recommend that you use it because peanut butter can go a long way and it will make your dish taste like peanut butter if you use as much as I've used. If you decide to use it, only use a fourth of a teaspoon, no more than that. So we're also using two tablespoons of hot chili oil. We use about a teaspoon of sesame oil. We're gonna use about a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of soy sauce. If you just happen to have some sesame paste, or if you can find sesame paste, then use about a, one teaspoon. And we're also going to be using one tablespoon of oyster sauce. And 
if you're wondering what this is for, this is going to be the base, the foundation of our entire ramen dish. This is where all of our flavor is going to come from, or the majority of it. Now that this is done, let's go back and work this broth. We're going to use two chicken bouillon cubes, or you'll only use one if you're making half this amount. So two chicken bouillon cubes, one can of coconut milk, and this is what adds a little different flair. This gives it a little Indian flair to the dish by using coconut milk like I am, but you can use soy milk as you traditionally would in a tantamen ramen. remember we still have the same flavors in the pan from our pork so we're getting an automatic seasoning on this broth here that's a half teaspoon of ground ginger And we can't let all this flavor in our mortar go to waste. So we're just gonna rinse out the mortar that we grounded everything in with the broth and pour it back in here to season and flavor. I'm about to use a fourth of a cup of heavy whipping cream to give it some stability it's going to make it a little creamy if you prefer your ramen really thin broth then you can totally totally skip this step altogether. your flavor is already there so this is only a matter of consistency Our broth is done. The only thing left for us to do is to prepare our noodles and blanch our bok choy. I'm using the Thai Kitchen Stir Fry Rice Noodles, which is a matter of preference, but it'll only take about five to seven minutes once your water is boiling. Uh, that's because I don't like my noodles to be mushy. I still like it to be kind of firm so I can get a good slurp on the noodles, but not tough so it's not chewy. Uh, that's a matter of preference. I guess you would call that a dante, but I think I forgot to tell you this at the beginning when you prepare your eggs and let them cool down. Go ahead and peel them and soak them in a fourth of a cup of soy sauce and half teaspoon of sugar. Now, blanch in the bok choy now for about three to four minutes so that it's firm and not all soggy, but still firm. And... The only thing else left, we've got to prepare. We got to build the dish. Here's what we need. Our minced pork, green onions, bok choy, our paste, our egg, and our noodles. I'm going to let the remaining of the video play out, but we're gonna start by laying down that fantastic paste that we made. 
has so much flavor and just want you to know that international food can also be sold food because it's made with so much love and so many different wonderful flavors so hope you enjoyed this video please like comment subscribe and even share this wonderful recipe it was so 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 delicious um and there you have it tantam and ramen with a flair with a twist a fusion okay i'll stop talking and let you enjoy the rest of the video bye